Councilman Simaluka? Here. Councilwoman Dorminio? Here. Councilman Garrick? Uh, Councilman Garrick's unable to be here this evening to, to illness in his family. Councilman Accomando? Here. Council President Mazur? Here. The public is hereby advised that any statements made during a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Sourbrook may not be privileged or protected, and that persons or entities who take issue with such comments or are offended by saying may and have in the past sought legal redress through the courts. Any member of the public who addresses the Council speaks for themselves and not for the Council. At this time, I believe we have presentations. Thank you, good evening everyone. I have a proclamation here because this is, the month of February is uh, American Heart Month. Uh, I think everybody here knows somebody or has been affected by uh, someone who has uh, been struck with some kind of heart disease or some kind of stroke. So I have this proclamation and what, it really, what we really wanna do uh, and what this month represents is to try to get all Americans to, to be aware, to be heart healthy, to live heart healthy, to uh, proper diet, exercise, see a doctor regularly. It's important. It may save a life. So I'm going to read this proclamation. Uh, in, rec rec in recognition of American Heart Health Month and National Wear Red Day, whereas the first American Heart Month which took place in February 1964, proclaimed President Lyndon B. Johnson via Proclamation 3566 on December 30th, 1963. Whereas it is essential to the health and well being of everyone, we are aware of the medical, social, and economic aspects of the problem cardiovascular diseases and the measures being taken to combat them. And whereas more than 600,000 Americans die of heart attacks each year, making it the leading cause of death for both men and women in the United States. It is because of ongoing medical procedures and advancements that treatment, awareness, and recovery is now more effective. And whereas February 2nd, National Wear Red Day is a national call to increase awareness about heart disease, the leading cause of death for women, and to inspire women to take charge of their health, heart health. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Robert D. White, the mayor of the Township of Saddlebrook, do hereby proclaim February as American Heart Health Month and February 2nd as National Wear Red Day. Thank you. At this time, we also have another um, presentation. We want to recognize the winners of our holiday decorating contest, which uh, was during the holidays in December. I'm going to have Thomas Van Winkle, who is the liaison between the mayor and council and the mayor's youth group. Uh, Thomas took the photos that night, and I'd like him to come up and uh, help me with the presentation. Come on, Thomas. Good evening, everybody. Um, on December 20th, we went out um, as the mayor's youth group. We judged the uh, holiday decorations around town. Um, we have three winners. Um, I'm going to get the certificates right. Okay, in third place, we had the Celentano family um, at 24 Garden Street, um, and they could not be here this evening. Um, you'll see Mayor White is holding the picture of their house, or one of the pictures we took. All the pictures of the decorating contest can be viewed on the Saddlebrook Township Facebook page, so you can see this picture and much more there. So I would like to congratulate the Celentano family on third place.
In second place, we had the Ritter Riser family at 150 Skillman Terrace. They came in second place for the holiday decorating contest. And once again, we have the picture on display right here. So I would like to congratulate them for finishing in second place. And I would like to have them come over, come forward, please. Congratulations. Here, you want to do a picture? Get in the middle. We'll take either side. Congratulations. And last but not least, we have our first place winner. Um, they're not here, right? In first place, we had the Vielli family at 83 Strathmore Terrace as our first place winners in this year's in the 2017 Holiday Decorating Contest. Congratulations. There's a picture right there. And let's give a round of applause to all of our winners and everyone who entered the contest for, for the holidays. Okay, and while I'm up here, I just want to detail um, a couple things coming up with the Mayor's Youth Group. Our next meeting is scheduled for February 21st. Um, what time? We said 5.30? Yes. Uh, at 5.30 at the Senior Center. Any Saddlebrook resident in grades 4 through 12 are welcome to attend. Again, the next meeting is February 21st at 5.30 p.m. at the Senior Center. Um, we're going to be discussing an upcoming project with our Eagle Scout, Michael Maniscalco. We'll be working on fixing up Avon Park in the playground. Um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be discussing many more things. So, anyone want anything, Mayor? No, that's good, Thomas. Thank All you. Right. Yep, I hope to see you at the meeting. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like the mayor and the uh, council president, Ms. Mazer, come up. This past year, Memorial Day, our department, as we get ready for our annual services, we took a department picture this year. Um, we had a couple of them made, each one taken up at each firehouse. We had another one made so you guys can hang it up here, town hall, as we take pride in the department in this town. So I'd like to present to you guys a picture of our department. Once again, that wasn't on mic, I don't, I don't believe, but I'd like to thank our fire department. You guys are awesome for all your dedication, really, and thank you for that beautiful picture. Can't wait to hang it up. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to, have, to open the meeting to the public. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. The meeting is now open to the public. Uh, please be aware that we do have a three-minute uh, time limit. Anyone wishing to be heard, please come up, state your name. Good evening. Omar Rodriguez, 275 Madison Avenue, former council president and former councilman. 
I have a couple questions. I received a letter on the mail, and I would like through the chair to find out uh, are the municipal taxes going up this year? If so, by how much? I just, once again, I'm going to rephrase my, my question or just repeat my question. The municipal tax rate already is in. It's 2.501. My question, once again, is are the municipal taxes going up or not? If so, by how much? Once again, through any of the elected officials or, uh, or business administrator can answer my question, the municipal tax rate is already in. Therefore, the municipal tax budget purpose or, or part is already in. Whether you guys remember or not, uh, excuse me, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, once again, once the municipal tax rate is in, you have the budget already. For your understanding, uh, your assessment on any property in Sadborough got an assessment price, an assessment value. You just got to multiply that by 0 0.02501. And that will be the portion of the taxes on the municipal level. My question, what I said, that if whether the municipal taxes are going to go up or not, because it brings me into another one. My understanding is the budget surplus is one of the highest. If so, can someone explain to me why the surplus is what it is, is so high right now, which is a plus for the, for the town, don't take me wrong. Can someone explain to me or explain to the residents why the surplus have reached this level being so high through the chair? We have uh Approximate numbers, the order hasn't finished reviewing. Mm -hmm. so, yes, we have a healthy surplus. All right. Hopefully those numbers will carry out. In answer to your tax uh, question, the tax rate. The letter said an estimated tax rate mm -hmm. because none of the budgets have been submitted. Municipal, county, or Board of Education. Once so again. It's an estimated of $2.50. Once again, once you're ready, projecting a surplus of that magnitude, it is the duty of the elected officials to start working on the budget in terms of not to increase the taxes but to give a relief to the taxpayers. Therefore, I'm urging you not to increase the taxes and use some of that surplus overall. The surplus to begin with just came because you guys budget uh, uh, the, the fuel tax rate at a, at a higher rate Maybe it didn't snow as you guys budget. And just to finish, uh, my understanding for so many years was that the commercial properties were we were not going to bond for the commercial properties that they because successfully they'd been appealing. We were told over and over every year that that was not going to happen. Every year is two three million dollars. Can someone explain it to me? And I will finish with that. Thank you very much. But I will, I will just expect an answer from any of the elected officials. Why, why are we still having the commercial properties appealing successfully their taxes when we were told for so many years already that that's not going to happen because we got this in place. Now we got a new system. This is not going to happen. This is the last year. But every year we're bonding to pay for those appeals. When is this going to stop? We've been listening the same for more than five years. Every year. Okay. Well, Omar, we got it. Your time is up, Mayor. Well, the only thing I can say is I, I think that the only
Thank you, Mayor. I, I don't have more time. Otherwise, I would like to elaborate on that. But thank you very much. Larry Tychek, 92 Claremont. Uh, just to continue with Omar, we were told with that rolling assessment that that was going to stop the commercial tax appeals. I mean, I know it wouldn't be 100%, but it's not. Like I said, the last time that guy was here, there's $2 million sitting on the book still. And we were told as in the public that we had nothing. We were all caught up and we were all done. We, we never caught up. I mean, there's one on here tonight. I don't know how old it is, but CVS. They got $7,000. I don't know how old that is. We'll get to that when, uh, when we go through the resolutions there. The other thing, like I said on Tuesday night when I was here, there is a tremendous amount of projects in this town that are not completed, not done, and, and they're being dragged. Uh, since Tuesday night, have any of you discussed any of them or see if we can wrap them up? And what's, like I say, the generator at town, Veterans Field, senior housing i mean senior housing been going on eight years now and now we're finding out that the attorney's just doing the deed we were supposed to have the funding in place and everything i i, I still don't see the the funding or a commitment from that guy with the funding um a couple months ago i know some of the residents came up and complained about fifth street the light has anybody done any research on that or anything like that with the department of transportation fifth street anybody do any checking on that or follow-ups when the chief was here and the lady was complaining? Okay, well, I, I called the Department of Transportation. The problem with that intersection there is it's a four-way intersection right now. You have two arrows in the two left-hand lanes on east and westbound on Route 46. You can't make an intersection a six-way intersection and put four arrows there. So the object there is to clear the fast lanes of Route 46 so that people can turn left onto Fifth Street going towards Garfield and left to Saddlebrook. So that problem, like I say, all you got to do is make a phone call and you'll, you'll get answers. But I mean, if you sit there and you wait for months and you wait for it to go away, it's never, you're never going to have answers. Like I said, I asked about the speed bumps for the people on President Street. We're sitting on that answer. We, we decided that we're not going to do it, but we're not going to announce it publicly. I, I think that's what you said, right, Mayor? That we're not no. going to go through with it? No. But we're still studying it then? We're still studying it? It's under study. So that, that's going to be another two, three-year project. We can't keep having two and three-year projects and five and six months putting a generator in it and Veterans Field and everything else like that. we we got to do something. I mean, someone's got to be held accountable. And like I said, you five people are the only ones that can do it. You five people have all the power in your hands to finish these projects. I mean, we vote to do them. We spend a lot of money and everything else. And I'm going to get back to the taxes now. I asked about the, the uh, assessments. The assessments are all over the board. There's no consistency. I told you, you can take two identical houses and there's an $80,000 difference in assessments. And the lower one is two years newer than the, than the new one, than the, the one that's assessed higher. We, we don't have any consistency. Whoever did this side of town, the same person didn't do that side of town. And, I mean, we need answers for that, and I don't think we're getting our money's worth on a $360,000 because, like I say, everybody's assessment went up between 6 and 7%, and, and our taxes are going to go up also because, like I said, you're just playing the numbers game. You're flipping the numbers so the pressure goes on the residents, and it should be on the commercial, and we're still going to get the commercial. I would like to know how much money we still have sitting on the books with commercial tax appeals from last year and how many new ones are in this year. Thank you. Anyone else pushing in behind? Good evening, everyone. Um, if I may, through the chair to Mr. Semaluka, Councilman Semaluka. Um, I was curious on how, where we're at as far as, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Emil Sudolf, uh, Van Leeuwen Terrace, Saddlebrook. Um, the inspection of the grease traps, I know you, got, you were looking into either getting, is, are, is this being done at all, number one? Um, I don't have a clue. 
Uh, yeah, because it'll, it'll eat up my three minutes. I, I, what I understand is a, a, a lot of the surrounding towns like Garfield, Lodi, Elmwood Park, they use uh, Passaic Valley Sewerage Commission, and they do all the inspections of uh, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know if we use them here in Saddlebrook, but uh, they do inspect, and, and, and uh, if there's violations, you know, they're addressed, and if everything is okay, they're usually issued a certificate of whatever, approval or, or whatever, and that's done on an annual basis, so I don't know if we're involved with them with that at all, but it might be a, a good thing to look into. Um, away from that, I just wanted to thank Councilman uh, Todd Accomando for getting involved with the, uh, I brought this up in the past uh, about the benches uh, over in the, our county park, and t Todd really uh, grabbed the bull by the horns here and uh, was able to get the county corrections department involved in replacing, repairing, doing all of that stuff. I know a bunch of people reached out to the Bergen County Park Commission and got nowhere. But Todd, awesome job. That, that's really, really good. That's a great thing. I think you accomplished uh, something really nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Finally, one other thing I just wanted to bring up. I brought this up a few meetings ago, and uh, kind of like everybody looked at me like I had three heads. Um, I asked actually our township attorney about, there was um, an actually a part that you could add on to an assault rifle that was called a bump stock. And uh, I asked if there was anything that the township could do to ban th these things. It was the guy in um, Las Vegas that murdered 60 people and I think he wounded 500 more by using this apparatus. And I asked if you could look into having the township put a ban on these things. Well, anyway, what I found out was on the very last day of, uh, of our past governor leaving office, he banned, put a ban on bump stocks in the whole state of New Jersey. And any bump, anyone possessing them, they either have to turn them in. They, I think there was 90 days. They have to either turn them in or, or uh, reach fine. You know, there's a really severe penalties for uh, possessing these things. So that's a damn good thing. I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's all I got to say. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Motion to close? Motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Council President. I, I do have a lot of comments tonight. I'm going to try to get through it as fast as I can. Um, Amos, you directed that. Amos Sudo, you directed the question about the grease traps to uh, Mr. Simaluka. Do you want to answer that? Yes. Yeah. We did discuss it on Tuesday night, but if you're up, if you know as much as I do, so. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. We do, um, we have an ordinance in place. Uh, our DBW does work with the Sake Valley at doing the inspections, so. Um, and they are going, they're starting to do them, um, really as we speak, they're going to start. Really. Um, so does that answer that question? And Mr. Simaluka can elaborate a little more if you want to see it. Um, talking about the budget, uh, we do have a temporary municipal budget. It's 26.25% of our 2017 budget. And we're working on a permanent budget for the introduction in March. Um, we are putting $50,000 from the 2017 budget uh, for employee retirement payouts. We're, we're going to make a line item for that. It's a responsible thing to do uh, in order to meet the financial obligation. These, uh, it does come up, and in the past, we tried to transfer money or bond money, but we're hoping to get enough funds in there so that when we do have a retirement, we don't have to scramble around to get the money. So that's something that uh, you know, our auditor recommended, our CFO, and we're doing that. In regard, in regard to the auditor and CFO, they're currently doing an assessment of the town's finances, and preliminary numbers look very good. Uh, it was mentioned tonight about having a healthy surplus, and it, uh, preliminarily, it looks like we are going to have one of the highest we've had in years. Now, you know, I've done a little research and in talking to, um, you know, the auditor and the, and the um, CFO and our business administrator and other towns. The benefit of having a healthy surplus, there's really four of them. The one is to maintain a good bond rating. That's what. That's what it's looked at, you know, they have a surplus. It's also good to have an adequate cash flow during the year. 
Um, it's good in times of economic downturn to survive that. And uh, probably one of the best things is to fund a one-time expense that comes up, especially if it's an emergency, without raising taxes. So that was mentioned here tonight about giving the money back to the, to the residents. Um, that's something that we may consider, but you know, there's, there's also a lot of benefits to having that surplus there. Uh, it's not like it's just you know, a pot full of money that you can just use. You know, it's, it's not meant to be that way. You have to have at least some surplus. At least most financial experts recommend it. Um, regarding the tax assessment letters, there was a lot of talk about that. Um, part, it's part of the five-year rolling year assessment. And I know it's where some residents, they get confused, they get another letter, their, their assessments went up, uh, so they get, they're afraid that their taxes are going to go up. Well, first off, I, the numbers that Larry mentioned, I don't know where you're getting those numbers, but the, what I'm hearing from our tax assessor is the average is about 2% that, that they're going up. That's the average. There are some that are going higher, and they're for whatever reason. You know, because maybe they did work on the house, or they got caught uh, where they had, you know, they got caught with, uh, they didn't take out permits, whatever it might be. But there are some that, you know, there are some anomalies here and there where they, they go way up. But for the most part, it's about 2%. Um, and what people got to understand is just because, and Omar mentioned it, although he did say that the tax rate, it is an estimated tax rate at this point, so we don't want to really speak upon it or, or, or you know, say that it's set in stone, but um, the preliminary numbers look good. It looks like we're, you know, on the, on the municipal side, I don't think we're going to get a big increase at all uh, based on what we spent last year, and just preliminary numbers. But it, just because your assessment went up doesn't mean your taxes are going to go up. It's based on the rate. It's how much the house is about, the value of the house, and then times that tax rate. And it does look like the rate is going to go down from what it was last year. Last year's rate was 2.578, and this year it looks like it's going to be 2.501. So uh, again, I don't, I don't believe there's going to be a, a big increase on, on the municipal side. You still have the county, you still have the board head. Uh, in regard to the, this tax, this, uh, this whole rolling reassessment, look, Larry and, and Omar, you mentioned about, it, it, we never said, we never ever said it's going to eliminate tax appeals. But what it is doing is, it's reducing the big, big bad ones. And we had, so we had over the years, since 2010, we had some, some of them $300,000 plus. We haven't seen that, and we're not going to see that. And that's what we're trying to eliminate. You're never going to eliminate all of them, because they're going to file appeals. You know, if, if they get back 7000 like you said, you know what, compared to if it was 50000 Years, or years earlier, you know, that, that's a benefit to us in, in the long run. It's saving us money. So no one said it was going to eliminate them. Uh, some grants. I mentioned this uh, on Tuesday. We received 16000 from New Jersey uh, State Recycling Tonnage Grant back in December. Also, our fire chiefs are here tonight. They are, I think, I think they're, from what I hear, they may be submitting it tonight. Uh, the FEMA 2018 Assistance to Firefighters Grant, which we're long overdue to get. And they, these guys, they did a great job last year. We missed out. But I, I have a good feeling this year we're going we're gonna to hit uh, pay dirt on that. So uh, they do a lot of work putting that in. Uh, so I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm hoping this is going to be our year. Um, committee reports, community partnership. Um, our coordinator is here, uh, Howie Weinberg. ACME did a, a promotion this week uh, up until the Super Bowl on Sunday. They have buy one bag of their uh, store-made cookies, and you get the second bag free. But their cashiers are encouraging uh, the, the, the purchaser to donate the other bag. And, and we're getting quite a bit of uh, cookies that are donated, which we donated to uh, the Soderbergh Food Pantry as well as Kessler Institute. Uh, we're going to also uh, the senior center and, and some of our emergency services. We, we just got another five cases of, uh, of cookies. So that's been a success. And that was, that was spearheaded by um, the uh, district manager, Eugene Pate of the ACME. So that's a, that's a good thing. Regarding uh, we're having uh, a mental health first aid training, um, this is the Access for All Committee. I'm sure Mr. Simaluk will talk more about it. 
We're supposed to have it uh, two nights from 5 to 9. We're looking at uh, March 14th and 15th, but we may change that. Uh, but that's something that's, uh, that's all going to be offered to uh, all residents. It's, we, they want 12, about 12 people maximum. So hopefully we'll have some room for any resident that might want to participate in that. Uh, Mayor's Youth Group, Thomas, thank you for giving an update on that. Our school liaison committee, uh, Business Administrator Pete Ladico is trying to schedule a meeting to discuss those mutual items of concern. Uh, really that, you know, we call it school liaison. I, I, I really look more at that as the shared services between the town and the school district. Uh, we have a resolution on the agenda tonight for uh, a shared services project with the school district regarding the lightning detection uh, satellites that we're going to put at all, on all township uh, fields and, uh, and, and parks. Uh, the main uh, uh, transmitter is at Veterans Field. So that's a good thing. Flood Committee, we really have not done too much with this, but I want to work closer. I have been in conversation with Rochelle Park and some of the neighboring towns uh, that have made some significant progress. So we want to meet with them and really try to mitigate whatever we can and work with our, our county and, and our state officials to uh, see what we can do. Also, uh, we're continuing to improve our FEMA community rating system score, which uh, Pete Ladico is the coordinator there. What that does is if we lower our score, um, it lowers insurance premiums for those residents who are in flood prone areas that have to pay flood insurance. So we're still doing that. Um, road resurfacing, uh, again, there's a lot of talk about what's not been done. I want to let you know what's been done. Uh, the water main project, because of that, we paved 9th Street and 3rd Street and the bottom part of Wilson Street last year. Uh, Wilson Street from Mid North Midland to Plaza Road. We also have some resurfacing grants from the New Jersey DOT, one being 5th Street uh, for 390000 That's a combination of several years that we're going to use to pave the entire length of 5th Street. Caldwell Avenue, we also were approved there for paving. Uh, that we're going to put, we got an extension on because with the senior building, senior uh, uh, affordable housing being built on Caldwell, we're going to wait till that's finished and then pay. But uh, we got approval for that from the state. Our engineer helped us out with that. We also put in an application for Fairland Parkway that was submitted this year by our engineer. And, uh, and that's going to be the whole length of, of Fairland Parkway from uh, the border all the way to uh, Cambridge Avenue. So that we're hoping, we didn't receive, that was just submitted. But uh, with our township resurfacing program that we started last year, or really two years ago, uh, we have several things in the spring that are going to be done. We're going to finish the top part of William Street. Bottom part was done uh, last year. Uh, actually, the, it, was, uh, it was the year before. Kenny Place, Claremont Avenue, President Street, which President Street will work with public service because they had to rip up the road to do some uh, gas work over there. They're going to pave um, from President Street, from Midland Avenue to 7th, and we're going to continue and, and use tax dollars to finish it off because we don't want to leave it, you know, it's not fair to leave that little portion undone. So we're going to do that, and that entire length will be paid. And also, um, in uh, the 2018-2019 Bergen County uh, road program, we received a letter notification from them that they're going to be paving the rest of uh, North Midland, uh, Mid Midland Avenue from Molnar Drive all the way to Alberta Lane. That's going to be done sometime in 2018 or early 19. Our capital projects, um, Veterans Field concession stand is basically we're, we're down to a punch list on the inside, uh, the rolling uh, window to counters has to be done on the, on the interior. Uh, all the uh, appliances are there. It looks great. We all went and visited it uh, this week, and uh, it's, it's really looking good. The exterior, we have handicap accessible ramp and outdoor, uh, the openers, automatic door openers that need to be finished, and also pavers and landscaping around the building. But other than that, and that should be, our engineer says, we're going to be doing that, uh, the outside work next week. Uh, senior housing, we have on tonight a merger of deeds, three deeds into one, which Bergen County required. Uh, look, th this, this uh, senior housing project, to me, it's a home run. I know it's taken a long time. It's taken a long time because we're dependent on the county. 
It's another layer of bureaucracy. That's what it is. But you know what? If we want it done, we could have went. We could have done this ourselves. But you know what? We didn't. We decided not to because it would have been too too much for us. That too much to bite off and chew. Honestly, you know what? If we would have done it on our own, we would have had a bond for a lot of money, and we would have had to uh, you know ha form a local housing authority and be responsible for maintaining that building once it's done. We don't. Once it's done, we don't. We don't have to do any of that. And we're going to get money back not in taxes, but in revenue from the apartments, from what they're rented for. We're going to get a portion of that back, which is going to be probably what we get for taxes. So I know it's taken a little bit more than even we'd like, but it's because we've got to deal with the county. And you know what? They're, they're working. It's not that they're, not that they're sitting on their hands and just saying, hey, uh, the heck with Saddlebrook. They're working with us, but you know, it, it's a little bit slower going than if it would have been done another way. So I'm happy with it, and I, I know they're going to start this spring, and it's going to be nice. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know the council is, too. The town hall generator will be complete shortly. I think the engineer was saying public service has to come to do an inspection. They're going to pull the wires through, connect everything up, and we'll be, we'll be up and running. I anticipate certainly within the next couple of weeks that will be done. Um, Michael Maniscalco, the Eagle Scout that was here, Thomas uh, brought it up briefly. He's got a project that he's doing. Uh, it's an Eagle Scout project, a proposal at Avon Field. There's a uh, playground that he wants to make basically a, a, a special needs, handicapped accessible playground. And uh, he's got a whole plan that, uh, that he's uh, you know, looking into doing and uh, he's got a budget and everything else. And uh, it's something that was already, uh, he was given the, the go ahead by the Boy Scout Council. And I think we're, we're all very supportive of that. I think I speak for everyone here on that. Also, uh, in that, that vein, Brownie Girl Scouts, they're looking into uh, doing a renovation and cleanup uh, on the playground that's across the street from the high school with the, by the tennis courts there and the library. Um, so we're going to work with them, with the DBW and uh, the Mayor's Youth Group, and, and try to do something there to spruce that up. Uh, I want to congratulate the holiday contest winners. I want to thank the fire department. Thank you so much for that beautiful photo and the, the job that you do for us each and every day. And I know you, you get called out a lot. I have it on my phone now, the pager, and believe me, it goes off. Sometimes I forget in the middle of the night, it wakes me up. But uh, no, I, I respect what you do, and thank you so much for that. Uh, again, February is American Heart Month. I uh, think we talked about that, and finally, happy Valentine's Day. I'm sorry to go on and on, but uh, I thought it was important to highlight the improvements and the things that we are doing. Thank you. Yes. Council, my notes to put back the ball. Okay. Well, I'd just like to respond to Emil. Emil, I appreciate the recognition, but there's still a long road. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, 1 o'clock, with the county, and I'm going to suggest we start hopefully in Saddlebrook, and we end up in Darlington in Marlowe. So that's how this thing snowballed. It went from Vance to Saddlebrook. Now it went from Saddlebrook all the way up to Donald Cook in Marlowe. So I'll let you know and the council know what's uh, going on after the meeting tomorrow to see where, uh, where we are with the funding. And the labor's first, so we're just waiting on funding. Um, Bob mentioned the lightning detectors. As a former liaison at the board of editors, we were trying to do this for about two and a half years, and I'm finally glad that it's happening because it's something we need in a small town. We have to do something happens to one of our kids. It's uh, not something we want to have on our uh, conscience. And uh, as far as the fire department, thank you very much for what you do and for your picture. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and happy Valentine's Day to all of us, especially mine. Um, I want to thank the mayor for going over all the projects, and I want to mention that the mayor and Mr. Lodigo and the engineer are on top of the projects on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're doing a really good job. And I think the other day at the work session, you were going to do a report um, on the status. And it kind of were cut short. But I want to assure all the residents that the mayor, and we are, but they are day-to-day. -day. And thank you for that. Um, we did reach out, I did reach out for John Bialy, uh, who's the senior housing contact for the county. 
Um, I understand there was a death in his family. I did email him, inviting him to come to the next work session, so hopefully he will be here. Um, I want to thank the fire department also for what you do. The picture is great, and I think that covers it. Happy Valentine's Day. First off, the council, the mayor and council, uh, including myself, uh, had the pleasure and the honor of attending last month uh, both the ambulance corps and the fire department installation dinners. Uh, the fire department was first, it was I think the first weekend in, uh, in January, first or second weekend, and this past Saturday was the ambulance corps. And on behalf of the mayor and council, I'd just like to extend our, our thanks and gratitude for everybody who, uh, who attended and who gives up their time and also their family. Because every time these guys go out on a call, uh, they're leaving uh, their husband, their wife, their kids uh, to do that, to help out the public. And they're not getting anything for it uh, other than our gratitude. I know it's not much, but it's all we can give you. And, and we thank you. But we could also give you a fire truck, so <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing. And an ambulance. And an ambulance truck. Um, the mayor mentioned something about the Access for All Committee. Uh, there is, uh, I, I do have it on my phone. Uh, it is the 13th and the 14th that we're looking at, a Tuesday and a Wednesday uh, of March. It's something called mental, fir mental first aid, mental health first aid, and just briefly. Um, just try and get it up here again. And here we go. Uh, just for people, uh, it's the flyer that came out, what is mental health first aid? Evidence-based interactive course that spans one eight-hour or two four-hour sessions. We felt that two four-hour sessions uh, just more doable for most people. One eight-hour session is, is kind of tough, just even focus for eight hours. Uh, teaches students the signs of mental illness and substance abuse and introduces a five-step action plan to initiate referral to mental health resources. So we are planning that. Now, the mayor mentioned it was a maximum of 12. It's actually a, um, a maximum of 25. It's a minimum of 12. So the first thing we need to do is get 12 people. So what we are going to do is uh, I am going to, as, as the chairman, I'm going to reach out to several local organizations. And, and the most obvious ones would be uh, fire department, the Ambulance Corps Community Action Program, uh, who, are, who are very active. Uh, our CERT team, uh, people who, who have volunteered, and, and other people, the school uh, for, for teachers, because this often comes uh, in, a, in a school setting. So we're going to reach out to, to those groups. Hopefully, we will get our minimum of 12. Uh, and then, if we're not up to the 25, I think what we're going to do is put it on the website, the TV, and try and, and fill it up. So first, we, we've got to get our 12, we've got to get our minimum, and then we've got to try and wedge in uh, and get in between 12 and 25. Uh, Grease Shrap, uh, Emil, and I hate to, to be redundant and also to repeat myself. So, uh, the Grease, no one got that. Huh? The Grease Trap Ordinance. We have one on the books. We've had one for a while. Uh, it's going to be enforced. Um, people have to uh, pay a fee, and we are working with Passaic Valley. And according to our ordinance, the superintendent of DPW uh, can go in there, and our, our health official can go in and check. Uh, it hasn't been thoroughly enforced, and as thoroughly enforced as probably we would have liked to would have been enforced, but we are on top of that. We've had some problems, and sometimes, you know, the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease. So uh, we understand that it's an issue, and we are on top of it. We do have the mechanism to enforce it, and we do get assistance from uh, uh, PBSC. Um, uh, the projects, the mayor went over most of the projects. Uh, and most of the projects, the major projects, are coming to a conclusion. Do they take time? Yes. Uh, we visited, uh, uh, most of the council and the mayor uh, visited Veterans Field. It looks great. Just 
the, uh, the snack stand and the restrooms. Uh, it looks like a number one facility. Now, I haven't been to a lot of other towns recently, but I know when my son was playing football, um, nobody had what we have, what we are going to have. Um, it is a real state-of-the-art kitchen. It is a very, very, uh, what we feel is a very functional uh, restroom facility that's going to be more than adequate. Uh, interior, no more, I know I promised that two years ago, but no more uh, porta potties. Uh, it's it's going to be good and it's going to be also uh, handicapped, everything's going to be handicapped accessible. There is an opening to go into that garage, which everyone knows is, uh, it's right now for storage, but again, we, we mentioned this, people laughed at me a few years ago, I said it was going to be in stages, and it was in stages. Uh, this is another stage, and the next stage for that whole facility will be that garage, and I'm certainly going to push for it. I know the council is very interested in making that garage functional for use. Uh, it's not big enough for as a uh, recreation center, but it certainly would be good to use for our uh, for, for some of the youth activities, wrestling, cheerleading come to mind. If there are uh, meetings that need to be done by commissioners, they can use that after we get done with it. So again, that's that's the next phase. Senior Center, I was more successful than you were to contact Mr. Bayari, and I actually got him. I believe he was on his way to the wake. So I, I did call him, and actually Todd drove me here tonight, and uh, we both had the conversation with him, and it was just like we knew. Uh, the way he explained it is that with, I mean, we had sub-zero temperatures, uh, or just about sub-zero temperatures recently, and then it went up to 50, and then it went down to 20, it goes up to 40. So right now is not the time to break ground. But they, they anticipate getting all the legal work done. Again, the merger of deeds, is, it's a legal thing. We, we had different, um, different properties. And in order to get this thing done the right way, they've got to file some kind of legal paper to get everything. So now it's one lot and block, basically. Um, but he's expecting, as we anticipated, as we talked about several months ago, that they were going to break ground in or around April, I'm hoping that uh, we can get that done. It's going to be the foundation, I believe, is going to be a prefab foundation. So they've got to, to do the digging, and right now is not the time to be doing that. So in a couple of months, uh, we should see some activity over there, and, I, and I'm glad that that's, that's going well. Um, in terms of the assessments, it keeps coming up. Like the mayor said, no one ever promised that there would never be an assessment. And I tell you, the, the CVS uh, property over there was assessed at $4.5 million, and we've got a $7,000 refund. You know, $7,000 refund on a $4.5 million property, that was a 2017 uh, assessment uh, or a decision. Uh, that's not bad. I mean, we're, we get killed when we're given $300,000, $500,000 back. The rolling reassessment, you can't look at something that happened. Listen, we just started this last year. This, I think, is our second year into this, into this project. So it's not expected that you're going to see refunds, and they're going to be for the 2015 year or 2014. This is before the rolling reassessment. And the one thing that we have to remember, without the rolling reassessment, if a property value goes up, commercial property value goes up, because of other sales, everything starts moving up, our tax assessor was not allowed to raise the taxes. But now, he is able to. So when we, when we do see the, the uh, property values rise on a commercial uh, business or commercial property, he is able to go in and reassess them for the higher value. Usually, what we were stuck with was going down constantly. Now we've got the ability to also go up. The surplus. Uh, we mentioned about the surplus. It's, it's one of those things. When you have a surplus, people say, don't raise our taxes. And when you don't have a surplus, it's, well, raise taxes. We need, we need some more money to be, to be held on the side. And the main thing, like everything in government, is a system of balance. Everything's got to be weighed. So we haven't made the decision yet. And uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to be able to go through a year and, and start to build up our surpluses. Now again, it's not a slush fund. It's not something that we intend to have, you know, 
tens of millions of dollars in, but uh, there was a time where there was no surplus at all. So to complain about the size of a surplus, I, I think that's, that's finding things to be angry about, to be upset about, and to question the, the mayor and council on the job that they're doing. Listen, it, it's sort of like paying off your credit card. You could, you could have money in the bank and, uh, and not pay off your credit card, or you could pay off every dollar in your credit card and not have a dollar in your bank, in your bank account. So you, know, you, have, to, you have to weigh the options. Uh, other notes, uh, want to give our prayers out to uh, Councilman Garrick's uh, dad, who's in uh, not the best of shape down in Tennessee, and that's why Dave can't be here tonight. So our prayers go out to the Garrick family for that. Uh, on a sports note, I just saw that our wrestling team cracked the top 25, which hasn't happened in a while. I know we were in there when, when my son wrestled. Uh, which was years ago, we were combined with Glenrock. We split off with Glenrock. It's all Saddlebrook kids. Uh, I think they've only lost for a matter of 25 and 4, so that's, that's awesome. I wish them the best of luck uh, the rest of the year. Um, and uh, I hate to say it, but go Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Patriots do it too many times. Actually, my, my, my hashtag is root for my Super Bowl pool box. I really don't care who wins, as long as I get the right numbers. So. Finished? Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a quick comment on um, the, the comments that were about the projects. While we don't have a tremendous amount of projects, we do have a couple of major ones. And of course, we'd like to see them come to fruition. I mean, we don't like them you know, out there. And like, like you know, um, everyone up here said, everybody's been on top of it. You can't compare public sector to private sector. Two different entities, two different beasts. Um, but it will get done, and it will get done right. Um, I also would like to commend our, um, our uh, ambulance corps. Uh, this, like the councilman said, uh, we attended their, um, their dinner this past weekend. And 66 years of service. I mean, we are so very proud of them. While surrounding towns are thinking about regionalizing or privatizing their, e their EMS, we have an awesome crew. And um, it is certainly our, our pleasure to um, introduce this first ordinance for a new volunteer, no ambulance, um, ambulance for them and new pagers and whatever other equipment they, they need. Once again, we are so very proud and so very fortunate to have them in our township. Um, also, uh, Councilman Simaluka said, "My uh, our prayers and positive thoughts go out to Dave Garrick and his family." And having said that, we'll start with our ordinances. Okay. First, ordinance. First reading of Ordinance 1639 18 <coughs> a bond ordinance to authorize the acquisition of an ambulance and pages for the use of the Volunteer Ambulance Corps. In by and for the township of Saddlebrook in the county of Bergen, state of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $325,000 to pay a course thereof to make a down payment, to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation, and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds for first reading. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Samuelica. Yes. Councilwoman Dorminio? Yes. Councilman Accomando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes. Be resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Santa Brook that a bond ordinance to authorize the acquisition of an ambulance and pages for the use of the Volunteer Ambulance Corps in by and for the Township of Santa Brook in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $325,000 to pay the course thereof, to make a down payment, to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds, heretofore passed on first reading, be further considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on the first day of March 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the municipal building, 93 Market Street, and that at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance according to law. With the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading, 
and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Motion. Motion. Second. 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 Councilman Samuka? Yes. Councilwoman Dorminio? Yes. Councilman Accomando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes. Next ordinance, ordinance 1640-18. A bond ordinance to authorize the acquisition of a fire truck and various equipment for the use of the fire department in by and for the township of Saddlebrook in the county of Bergen, state of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $1,500,000 to pay the course thereof, to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation, and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds, and to amend the bond ordinance number 1613-16 that was adopted on October 6, 2016. For uh, once again, I'd like to also thank the, the our fire department, awesome crew. We got the best. Your dedication and service. May God keep you all safe. I have a motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Councilman Samuka? Yes. Councilwoman Dorminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes. We resolve by the Township Council of the Township of Sauerbrook that a bond ordinance to authorize the acquisition of a fire truck and various equipment for the use of the fire department in by and for the Township of Sauerbrook and the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $1,500,000 to pay the cost thereof to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds and to amend bond ordinance number 1613-16 that was adopted on October 6, 2016. Year 2-4 passed on first reading. Be further considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on the first day of March 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. or sooner after as the matter can be reached at the municipal building, 93 Market Street. And that at such time and place, all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance according to law, with the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading, and a time and place when we are said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Motion. Motion. Second. 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 Well. Councilman Samuka. Yes. Councilwoman Garminio. Yes. Councilman Arcomando. Yes. Council President Mazur. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on those items unless a council member or member so request it, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. The one motion signifies adoption of all resolutions, receiving file letters, correspondence, reports, and approval of minutes and applications. If the council has no objection, so we received it earlier, the uh, authorization for the deed consolidation be put on the consent agenda. No objection. And resolution number 11 will be voted on second. Motion. Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Samuka. Yes. Councilman Mazur. Yes. Council Malcomando? Yes. Council President Dormeyer? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I read that one wrong. Just see if you're listening. That's okay. <laughs> Boy, that was quick. Uh, see? <laughs> what a meeting, and I'm out already. Everybody voted yes. <laughs> we have the approval of the payment of bills, zone plumbing and heating. Councilman Samuka? Yes. Councilwoman Dorminio? Thank you. Councilman Akamando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes. We have the mayor's appointment for the uh, advice from the Council. Library board Council President Mazur? Motion. Motion. Second. Councilman Samuka? Yes. Councilwoman Dorminio? Yes. Councilman Akamando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes.
Sure. Aye. The meeting is now open to the public to the agenda item. Okay. Larry Tychek, 92 Claremont. On number eight, uh, 4296 for a sewer, what, uh, or rapid pump, what was that? For I'm sorry, on number eight, it says purchase over 2,500 rapid pump 4296 sewer. What is what is that for? One of the pump stations or? The pump station. what, which one? I mean, shouldn't the council know which pump station we public, uh, you know, purchased a Mayhill, you know, Russell Lane? They should be on the top of your, if you just voted on it. Um, number four for this refund for CVS, what year is that? 2017. 2017. Okay. Uh, I know the mayor said, and I didn't expect to have zero, but... Mr. Simaluka, also, you made a comment on it. You guys should go back and watch the presentation that A and A or whatever their company is the night they came in with Mr. Carlson, and said that he had the ability with to take the Trump card away to stop these things. This is only a little one. This is the beginning. Okay. Nobody ever said there'd be zero. Nobody. But I'm just saying, and I said it that night, that this is the beginning. Once one comes in, they're all going to come in. And like I say, are we prepared to go to battle with them? That's what we got to do. Or are we just going to give in like we, like we do? As soon as they file them, we give in. And the other thing I disagree with on the, uh, with the assessment is I did maybe 15, 20 houses at random, okay? And the percentage that they went up, if you want, Bobby, I'll sit down with you and show you the addresses, and you'll see the percent. They're not 2%. They're five and a half to eight percent, and I just did them randomly. Nice size houses. I didn't do old houses. I did nice size houses. My entire block, okay, which is all uniform houses, the the uh, increase is six and a half percent. That's an entire block. That's not two percent. Two percent might be on the old blocks, Evans Place, Graham Terrace, where the capes are, but anybody with a substantially less than 25-year house went up between five and a half and eight percent and there are a lot there's more of them houses in Saddlebrook now than there are in of the of the standard Cape Cod that we were accustomed to having so you know they might do you know they always work in a numbers game and that's what they're doing to us because like I say if you want to sit down I'll gladly sit down with you and I'll show you I'll give you 15 addresses off the top of my head and you'll see that they are six to seven percent increase on the assessment and then we can pick 10 Cape Cods where they went up 2%. But the majority of it is that across the board. And I said I did them randomly. I didn't do them out of, you know. So I, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with that number. And we can't keep getting fake numbers. And that's what we're living off of. We're living off of fake dates for the senior center. That guy slipped last uh, a couple months ago when he said 2019. And that's what it's going to be. I don't know who slipped the engineer or him. And that's what they told us. But, you know, you, you can't stay on top of things and just letting people buy time. And that's what they're doing. For the, for the chair, yes. I just want to uh, comment that that number, the 2%, I got that from the tax assessor. Okay, but you, Bobby, you can't, let me tell you something. Okay, I've, I've talked to other people that are in that business. And... We have a tax assessor that doesn't do his job. I'm going to show you one example. I'll call you tomorrow. The property record card hasn't been updated since 1967, and the house is assessed at $400,000. We didn't have $400,000 houses in 1967. You have to update both parts of the thing, or else the records aren't up to date, and that's what's happening. I really can't comment on. Well, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow, Bobby, and I'll let, I'll let you know. And I'll give you the examples. And you can call in. Anyone else pushing the chair? Motion closed. Through the chair. I just want to. Through the chair. 
some houses, I think the way it works is they say that you know, a certain percentage of houses go up, a certain percentage of houses go down, and a certain percentage of houses stay the same. So for every 6%, a house that's raised 6%, there may have been a house that went down 6%. So, you know, say you pick random houses and it just all happened to be 6%, maybe that side of, maybe that particular street was under assessed for a little bit. I, I don't know, but that's generally what happens when you have the reassessment. Some people are going to go down, some people are going to go up, and some people are going to go the same. Uh, uh, comment? Do the chair, I'm sorry. I know Pete, I'm sorry. Had, Pete had a conversation with uh, our faculty. Yeah, based uh, the ratio that was presented, it was, uh, most of the homes were at 2% uh, uh, ratio for an increase. Uh, I think on average, uh, we had about, uh, out of 4,137 homes or, or properties, uh, 4,034 properties would, uh, based on last year's budget, these are all numbers based on the 2017 budget, would have shown a decrease in property taxes. So these are the, the figures that we have. We don't have a 2018 budget. I know we've talked about property. Uh, I'm not seriously, how many, number, how many houses have 4,137 properties, residential. 4,034 properties out of that 4,137. Based on the 2017 budget, that's the only numbers we have. We don't have anything for 2018. There's no municipal tax rate, school board. Uh, they would have had a, a slight decrease in their taxes. Good idea. Yeah, I think maybe at a work session and have yeah. the tax assessor come and let's go over it. New business, old business, new business. Through, through the chair, I just want to give a little update about uh, about Dave's uh, situation. It's uh, his dad had emergency surgery, but he's doing much better now. Good. Um, awesome. Starting to come along, so it's good. Thank God. It's good to hear. Session. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Going into closed session. Potential litigation. Potential litigation, yep. 